been talking about uh, past few weeks. Been here in Romans 19 and 11, uh, dealing with uh, Israel and how we as Gentiles have been brought into uh, a kingdom as uh, by the grace of God and because uh, the one that was intended for reject the, rejected the message that God had sent to them. Uh, they had the message, had the very words of God, but did not receive what God had given them. And, uh, we, and two is here in these chapters, uh, I think we, we also see that, uh, that it's very consistent with all the teaching in Romans that all are saved by grace. And even there's coming a, a time when uh, the ones who are in belief, unbelief, will come to belief in Jesus Christ and, and, uh, and be part of the kingdom. Uh, so, the, so Jew and Greek are like Gentile. All, all come to God in the same living way through Jesus Christ. Uh, in preparing uh, this lesson today, uh, I couldn't help to think about uh, Thanksgiving and uh, the time that we're fixing to go through now, even as, as Christmas. Um, uh, the verse that stood out stood out in chapter 11 and kind of uh, got the thought process from which I took this lesson from was uh, where David uh, talked about uh, Israel. Uh, Paul is quoting from uh, the psalm here in chapter 11 verse 9 where David says, Let their table become a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense to them. Um, well, there was a table, like I said just a few minutes ago, there was a table set before them. There was a way set before them. And um, because they, look, they pushed away from that table and they rejected the table uh, that God had for them, that left them uh, with nowhere, look, that left them with no salvation, that left them uh, nowhere to go. Uh, the, very, the very thing that God had prepared for them had become something that... Uh, was there, would, they would be judged by because they rejected the table of God. Um, and, that, and that's what got me thinking about uh, the table. And, uh, and I got to looking in Scripture about uh, when you see that word table, what does it mean? Uh, look, when we see a table, it's more what we're going to talk about here and what we see in Scripture, uh, especially, you know, just coming through Thanksgiving and all the many... Uh, families that got together and the and the meals that were cooked and were set upon a table, you know that those who were at the table might partake of a meal. So look, when you see in see in the Bible, you see table. Uh, we're thinking uh, as spread out or, or usually for food or a meal. You know, you you've probably heard them say many times. You know, wow, what a spread. Um, you know, so you know uh, the table. So. To, in Thanksgiving and the Christmas season, uh, we need to really uh, take notice in our hearts and our minds, and look, and not get so caught up in in the food that's on the table and and the many blessings that we forget who sent the blessings and where the blessings come from, and uh, who ultimately we are to be gracious to and thankful for. But um, we're going to talk about a spiritual table here. Uh, and we would do good even as we go through these holidays that we we consider uh, the spiritual table and and the means uh, that have been brought to us that God has set for us that we might have uh, fellowship with Him uh, even even on a table you know as we talk about a table uh, a supper you don't hear that as much as you once did um, you know now. Now, days, you know, we call, uh, you know, the last meal of dinner. But I know when I was growing up, and uh, uh, the very last meal of the, you know, the main meal of the day was called supper. You know, it's supper time, and, you know, it's a meal, the chief meal, uh, and it was usually in the evening time. That was, you know, that was, the, that was the main feast of the day. That was where, you know, that was the main course. Uh, it wasn't just a, uh, 
a snack. You know, normally it was set on a it was a spread. It was set on a table uh, that you might uh, and would eat that eat that meal uh, that supper meal, and you know, and then. This word sup, we see that in Scripture too, coming from supper. Uh, sup, you know, to take part or to dine, uh, to eat of this meal. And as this uh, lesson comes about, I hope that we can uh, uh, bring all these together uh, to show something about the table and, and, and the ones around the table. And, and what's going on is, as we sup or we take part of the meal around the table and, and the communion, the communication and all uh, that is going on as we partake of this, of this, this supper or this, this feast uh, that God has prepared for us. But before we go any further into this uh, message this morning, uh, Josh, take us to the Lord in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this wonderful week you've blessed us with, Lord. Just please be, be with us all this week, Lord, and I ask that you be with our Father, as He preaches this lesson, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, one thing here, as I already showed in verse 9 of chapter 11, talking about the table, and we see how um, uh, Israel had stumbled, and uh, Israel had not seen the message, and, and we as Gentiles were able to come in, but even as we come in by the grace of God, we should never think highly of ourselves, so we shouldn't get to the point to think that we've been saved by some good works that we've done, but we've been saved by the grace of God, and look, we need to consider and, and take reverently these words, this table, look, Look this morning, look at the table as the Word of God. Uh, the, the Bible, look, the table and the Word of God that, that the Lord has set before us. In verse 22 it says, Look, therefore consider the goodness and the severity of God on those who fail severity, but towards you goodness. If you continue in His goodness, if you continue in His goodness, otherwise you will also be cut off. So we say, look, uh, goodness and graciousness has been offered to us. A divine meal has been spread out before us. And we have goodness by the Lord. But there is great severity to those who refuse to come to the table that has been spread by the Lord. Uh, you know, that He wants, look, at supper, this uh, feast that's, that's been given by God Himself, there's great severity to those who refuse it. Um, Looking back at uh, Luke chapter 13, no, Luke chapter 14, there's a parable given here. Luke 14 verse 16 says, Then he said to them, A certain man gave a great supper, invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask for you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways, the hedges, and compel them to come in, and my, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men whom were invited shall taste my supper. So you see right here, you see that God, and you see through this parable, that a man, he created a great supper, and it was intended for, for, uh, for certain people to come, but you know, as he went out and invited them to come to the supper, they made excuse after excuse after excuse while they could not attend his supper. And it says that the that the Lord got angry, you know, and then he called the, the lame and the maimed and the blind. And then, uh, you know, and even after they came in, there was still, still room, and he called for others to come in. And, you know, and, and he filled his house that he might have his supper. But those who he had originally attended for, 
to be the supper, he says, For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. So look, that's the danger that we see here. here this, is, this is speaking of what uh, uh, the Apostle Paul is talking about here in Romans 11. Look, they were... Uh, God was gracious and had spread a table through His Word, and that and that message and that and that table was Jesus Christ, and that was the feast that that uh, that the men and the women of Israel should have heeded to and came to the table of the Lord, but they rejected the table of the Lord. They pushed themselves back from the table. They wanted to have nothing to do with this chief meal or this feast that God had prepared for them. They rejected Him, and then. Then God, through through grace, turns to us also that you know that we might come into His supper and that we might look that we might sit at His table. The spread of His word, we've been invited by the King of the Kings and the Lord of Lords to come to a table and a spread, a meal that is so great and divine that we might have supper and that we might sup, at, you know, at the at the meal that God has prepared for us. But we also, look, we also need to take heed, just like it said here in verse 22. Look, the goodness and the severity of God. We should not take for granted. We should not say to ourselves that we're something good or something great. But we should come to this table in humility and graciousness and being grateful. Because the same God who, is, who had cut off... Um, that nation at that time, those who rejected Him, if we refuse and we neglect His call and we neglect uh, and do not come to Christ by faith, we too will be cut off just like Israel. We too will be cut off just like these men and women at that day and time who rejected Jesus Christ. Now going just a little deeper now, I want to show you something about, the, about what it is and, and the relationship Look, the closer you get to the table, the more intimacy you find. The closer you get to the, to the feast, the more intimacy you find. The more understanding you find. Look, right here, communion. Look, to communicate, participate, uh, uh, something distributed, fellowship, uh, camaraderie, uh, good fellowship. All these things come around when you think about it. Um, when you get around into the home, when you go down, when you get into, it's, it's when you come into the, it's when you get down into the very, very personal things of life that you find the fellowship, that you find the blessings, that you find, uh, look, it's where you find participation. Um, you don't see it as much so today as you once did, but look, at one time, in one place, uh, at this supper, at, at this chief evening meal, look, people came in in the evening time and they sit around the table, and it was at that meal where you, where they, where they communicated with one another, and it's where the very heart and the very, you know, the very love and and all the things of life were shared, you know, sitting at that table. And today, and today. And this life that we live in, in the fast pace that we go in, so many times that is missed. And, you know, something that once was shared around the table, uh, so many times there's not even a distinct time and place where we sit around the table and commune, commune with one another, where we converse and talk. Uh, you know, the communications, uh, earnest and intelligent discourse. Uh, look, it's around... It's around the table that uh, we look that we know one another, and it's around. Look, it's around God's table. Look in Psalms 34, it says, "Taste and see that the Lord is good." And it's around the table of God. It's in the intimate relationship that we get to know Him and we see and understand Him. Um, you know, in in large numbers. Look, the larger the crowd, the less personal. That it is, you know, the you know, even you know, like our government and all, as they rule this nation, uh, you know, there's not a very intimate relationship, you know, in this in that in that fashion of all of millions and millions of people in, in this nation. And you know, as you get down closer, you know, you get into counties and, uh, but you know, that that's all in a in a worldly worldly sense. But but like I was telling you earlier, as you get in 
The closer you get to home, the closer you get to heart, the heart, and the closer you get to the table, the closer you get to the supper, you know, where you're able to sup with one another, where you're able to commune with one another, that's where you find the true, the true communication. Even, look, Christ himself, he communed, he, he spoke publicly out in the crowds, and look, he gave, and he talked out in in, in the streets of Jerusalem, and you know, and he and he had many conversations with many people. But it's when he got look, it's behind the scene. Look, it's when the twelve, it's back. It's when they came together. That's when you seen the main communication. That's when you seen the very plan. You know what? I mean? That's when you seen the very intimacy of God. It's when Jesus was alone with the twelve, and you know, you even see that in Luke. Luke chapter 22, I believe it is. Let me find that. Uh, bear with me. Look, Luke, in Luke 22, verse number 14. Look, this is, this is the last meal. This is the Passover. I want, I want us to see something here. Uh, in Luke uh, 22 and 14, it says, Then the hour had come... He sat down, and the twelve with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, is, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. So we see here, look, we see that Christ at the at the Passover, he's he's partaking the Passover supper with the disciples. And look, look at how look at the intimate uh, setting here, and look what Jesus is saying about himself and how he uh, he will be he is the bread and he is the wine. Look, he is the one. Uh, he is the one. He's the one who is serving and he is the one who is giving. Um, look, one thing about uh, uh, communion. Look, there's something uh, being. Uh, look, there's something being distributed in Christ. Look at, at communion. Uh, that what is being distributed. Christ Himself is being distributed. You know, as you take communion, it says take and eat. You know, as you take the bread and as you take the wine, you know, something is being distributed to you. And the table that God is distributing to us. Look, we take what God has given us. If we want more or we try to find some other way is to be like Israel at this time. It's to be like, uh, it's, it's to push away from the table. Look, it's to want, it's to, it's to be like even, look, at the Passover itself. As they came out, look, as they came out of Egypt and as they got into the wilderness, God provided for them. But they, but they complained and they grumbled and they wanted more. What God had provided was not enough for them. And many died out there in the wilderness because of unbelief. And because they tempted God and they tested God not being satisfied with what God is, was distributing to them. And then the same thing for us today. Look, uh, as we commune, if we're going to commune with God, if we're going to communicate with God, if we're going to participate around His table, He, look, He adds aid. Uh, he's the one who adds aid. It's at this table where we find aid. You know, in alms, um, you know, you heard giving alms, you're giving help, support. It is around the table of Christ that we find help. You know, help for the need that we have. We are sinners. We are lost without hope. This table has been prepared for poor sinners, and we must we must take we must take what is being uh, distributed. We must participate in the aid and the alm and the support that God has given us through this table, Jesus Christ. We must not grumble. Look, manna was being fed to uh, 
to Israel in the desert. But you know, they came a time, they wanted quail. They, you know, they, they, they lusted for something different than what God had had for them. And as we go into this season, look, of Thanksgiving, as we go into this season of Christmas, and as we go in this time where, where we're, we're together in these intimate uh, settings with one another, let us, let, us, let us take heed to our wants and our lust and, and, and not get so tied up in the things that we desire that we miss what God has given to us. Even as we see it, as we come up to celebrate Christmas, we see that God is giving His Son. Something is being distributed. Something is being given. And you know, and, and we should take, and as we take, and we have fellowship with the gift that God has given us, and that we have good fellowship with one another around the table of Christ. We have communion as we commune together. So we see here, look, Jesus, right here as He said, look, look what He said to them as He sat there as they took the Passover. Then He said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He had a deep desire. Look, He had a fervent, He was burning with desire to commune. And to have this supper. He wanted to sup. Look, he wanted, he wanted to dine. He wanted to take this last meal with the ones that he loved, that the ones that he cared about. Look, he had them all around, and he that's where he went, he desired to be there with them. And you know, and that's the same thing today. Look, as we come to God's table in Jesus Christ, there is a desire for him to be with us. And we you know we should have a desire and the and where the communion and the fellowship, the good fellowship comes, is when we have that same communion. As we look, we long for the chief meal. We long for the feast that, that we're there with Christ and the one who's given it to us. We find great satisfaction in being at the table as we sup, as we take that meal with Christ Himself. Look, it one other thing I want us to see about the Passover. Look, even this table that we talked about, uh, the Scripture, the Word of God that had been prepared, uh, going back to the Passover itself when it was first instituted. Uh, the Passover was instituted when, when the children of Israel uh, were in Egypt. And they were still under bondage by Pharaoh. And you remember Moses kept coming to Pharaoh and said, "Let my people go." You know, and and the plagues were being uh, were minister, you know the plagues that were coming upon Egypt because Pharaoh refused to let his people go. And I want you to show. Isn't it amazing how God, even in the institution of the Passover, as he as he determines to set his people free from Egypt? Look, he could have done it in many different ways. He could have had them all. Look, this Passover, look, I'm going to show you how intimate this Passover is. In, a, in such an intimate way. I mean, it could have been that, that, that God told Moses, Alright, go get all the people, and y'all come stand in this great big crowd here. And you know, y'all, you know, look, and we'll just make this very impersonal. You know, you just come here, and you know, and, uh, and, and you shake your hand three times, or you know, you all take something out of your pocket and you put it up here, and that's what's going to be that seals your safety, you know, here. But look what God does here. Look how God institutes this. As He told Moses, look how the Passover, how it happened. As uh, in, in chapter 12 of Exodus, look what Moses did as, uh, as God had instructed him. It says, then in verse 21, it says, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourself according to the families and kill the Passover lamb. Okay, look, the instruction was, here's what was going to protect them as the death angel went through Egypt before they left before they left Egypt. As the firstborn of all of Egypt was killed as the death angel came through. Look what God institutes here. Look, he says, tell each family. Look, he, they called all the elders together. And what the deal was, look, that each, each family would take a lamb. And, and you know, they would, that lamb would be slain and that lamb would be cooked. And they would eat the Passover meal that night when the death angel came through. And they were, you know, their lives were spared that night, you know, and that was God's Passover. That was God's protection over them. And look, what it, look what it says in verse 26 of the same chapter. 
And it shall be when your children say to you, What do you mean by this service? Look, they, this... This Passover meal was to be done continually through generations. You know, and the whole point of this, this Passover meal from generation to generation was this right here. So, and it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by this? Why? What's this lamb here for? Why are we gathered around this table right here? What's this meal for tonight that we're having? And verse 27 says that you shall say, it is a Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our household so the people bowed their heads and worshiped. So you see what's going on there? You see how intimate he, the, the Passover was, the Passover meal. Uh, look, the closer you get to home, the more you see the blessings of God, the more you see the authority of God, the more you see the relationship with God. You know, the closer you get into the heart, that's where you find the things of God. That's where you find the means of God. You know, that's where we, you know, we trust God. It's not, it's not in a big setting where there's 55,000 people out there, uh, you know, chanting something or you know, some big idol being erected, you know, and, and everything. And that's not where you find, look, they bowed their head and worshiped there. We worship God. And the closer we get to our family, that's the more, look, we instruct each other. Look, I stand here today, and I teach you, Josh, and I teach you, Caleb, you know, as, as we sit here this morning, look, it's, it's our responsibility, just as, just as he told them, look, that sacrifice, keep doing it continually, that your children may know what God done for you in Egypt, how He brought you out of Egypt, and how He spared your life through the sacrifice of the Passover lamb. And you know, and as we come, look, so many times, look, this, this communication, uh, our sermon, look, a lot of times, look, it seems impersonal, I know. A lot of times, you know, when there's a big crowd around, and a lot of times when, when, when preaching, things are not as intimate Things are not as close as when, look, when you're in the home and when you're talking with one another, when you're around the table and when, you know, as you commune. And just think, just think of that night, you know, as, as they sit around that table, you know, as they, as they ate that Passover lamb, knowing that the death angel was coming through. You know, there, it was a very personal setting. It was a bit, you know, around the table that night as the angels spared their lives. You know, they had so much to be grateful for. And think as the years continually went on, as they, as they shared that story, you know, how God has spared, how God spared their lives in Egypt when, when uh, He took the firstborn's life and how we, how He passed over us that night. You know, and, that, and that's the same thing. Look, that's as, as fathers and mothers, uh, you know, in, in a family setting, that's the big thing about look, opening this table of the Word of God uh, continually and talking continually the things of the heart of God's Word. You know, and, and you know, as we commune together, as we as we talk talk about this table that the Lord has set for us in Jesus Christ, the Passover Lamb Himself. You know, the things that happened in Egypt was just a, uh, a shadow or just a picture of what was ultimately to come through the table and the Passover lamb that was put on the table, the spread, the meal that was given to us uh, in Jesus Christ. You know, that, that, you know, that's the ultimate meal, the ultimate place of uh, satisfaction and the feast ultimately is in Christ and that's been set for us. So we see here that there is a, an intimate thing here. Uh, Christ, look, salvation, being born of God is an intimate thing. It's a relationship. It's a heart thing. It's not something, it's not, look, it's not just some do's and some don'ts. It's an intimate thing. It's wanting to, it's wanting to sup. It's wanting to take. It's wanting to take the chief meal with the one who gave it, you know, one who prepared to supper. It's a very intimate thing. Look, I want to show one other thing here in, in talking about uh, communion. Look, we need to be careful. I want to change this just for a minute too. Let's be careful about what we commune and uh, who we commune with. You know, uh, 
in, in the ultimate sense, look, the closer you get, even the relations, look, intercourse, I mean, you have social intercourse, look, interreaction, but look, even as a, a, a man and a wife, we, we've talked about the knowledge, you know, that a, that a man and a woman share in knowing one another, and that deepness goes more than just, you know, than just a, 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 a you know, just the same type of relationship you have everywhere else. It's an intimate relationship, as we can see right here. And that's one thing that you will see with Christ. Look, your commun as you commune with, with Christ, is such an intimate. It, it's, it's just as a man and a wife, you know, as, as they know one another, uh, you know, in a special way. So we see, look, it, it, that's the type of commun communion uh, that Christ has with you. He knows you inside and out, you know, and you desire to know Him inside and out, you know. So that's another sense of, uh, of communion as we commune with Christ Himself. So you see, the closer you get to Christ, the closer that you and yourself get away from the whole entirety of everything, the, the salvation itself and the relationship, the, the closer you get to Him and the Word of God, the table that's set for you, the more intimate the relationship is. Okay, all right. Look, switching again uh, about being careful. Look, be careful with whose table. Be careful with the the spread that you take. Look, there's many spreads being set out there, Josh. Many spreads being set out there, and you know, and um, you need to be careful where you take your meal from. You need to be careful uh, with those who you. Uh, communicate with. Look, we communicate with those we work with and those that we are around with daily and our friends and all. But at, but look, you can get involved with other people and you can get in the type of relationships. Look, that, and you can, as you come around like those dinner tables and those friendships, look, make sure that those friendships are the type of, you know, you know, the type of uh, friends that you have are ultimately are, are, are from are godly, Christ-centered friendships because, look, to commune around the long wrong table is to find yourself under the severity of God. It's to be lost. It's to be drug away from the table uh, of, of the fellowship uh, of, of God's people. So let, let us be around God's people. Let us, uh, look, we need to open our eyes and we need, we need to look and understand uh, that there are many out there who want to deceive. Look, in, in 24, look, no, look, right here, for, even before, before we got right here to what communion was going on here at the Passover, in chapter 22, verse number 4, look, what Judas, Judas was around the table that night, but Judas betrayed the Lord, I mean, look, Judas was not of them. But I want you to look at what, what was going on here in 22 and verse 4. Look at, look at the communion that was going on here. Look at the fellowship that was going on here. Look where Judas was right here at the beginning of this chapter. It says, so he went, look. Let me start at the first. Now the feast of the unleavened bread drew near, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him. For they feared the people. Then Satan entered Judas, surnamed Ascariot, and was numbered among the twelve. So, listen, look at here. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains and how, how he might betray him. This is Judas. So he went his way and conferred. He went his, look, he went his way and communed with the chief priest and captains how he might portray Jesus. You see where Ju you see where Judas, you see who, where he who he was conferring with, who he was participating with, the chief priest and how he might, how they might betray him. He was going to betray Christ. So his communion and it was in a different place. He, hey, he was sitting around the wrong table. He was not with the table. Uh, he was not with the table. The rest of them were around. His communication um, 
was with someone else. And we need to take heed of that. We need to understand that our communication needs to be, and our, and our place needs to be at God's table, and not with the world, and not with those who are against God. As Judas was, he communed, he conferred with them. All right, look, we've used this before, and I want to go, go back to it again. There's so much here in it. As we talk about the intimacy around the table and, and, and all that's going on, uh, uh, on, the, on the road to Emmaus, as we talked about before, uh, look, in, in chapter 24, I want to look at what's going on here in chapter 24 on the, two, on the road to Emmaus. In chapter 15, it says, So it was, these are the two men that were on the road, look, and so it was, while they, while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So these two, look, look what these two, what they were doing is these two were con conversed and reasoned. Look, earnest and intelligent discourse. You know what? Intellectual, earnest and intelligent discourse. Look, they conversed and reasoned with one another about the things they were having. They were in communion with one another as they walked to the road, walked on the road. You know, these two had a had a fellowship together as they talked. So, you know, that, that's another thing we see about fellowship. They had, you know, fellowship and communion with one another. So we see here on the road to uh, uh, this road to Emmaus that we see two having. Uh, conversation. They were, they conversed and they reasoned about what had happened about the crucifixion and about those who had come and seen that Jesus was gone. And they were talking there. So they so look so they were being so they communed together. They were in communion with one another. All right. Look, we've said this before. We're gonna show it again. Look right here in, in verse. Uh, for, as Jesus came to them, look as he opened their eyes. To the scriptures, as we talked about before, behind Moses, look, as Jesus comes up to them and with them as they walk down that road, he opens up their eyes. Look, he let, look, it's here in this, it's, look, it's not this type of sermon again where he, you know, where, where it's so, uh, look, so many sermons sometimes when we hear preachers preach, sometimes if we're not careful, you know, they may seem cold or dark, but, but when God is speaking to you, if it's through a sermon or, th you know, through his word, the, the very thing that he's doing is not cold. His relationship with you is not stale. His, his, relation, his, his communication with you is something special as you sup with him. Look, as, as we see here, look, as, in verse 29, But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went to stay with them. Look at that. Look right here. I, how this works out. Look, supper time, the, the feast meal, usually in the evening. And I mean, I, look, there, this is kind of, kind of go, this ain't nothing, uh, uh, just some parallels I'd like you to see here. Um, but um, how even here, look, it, it's getting toward evening. It, it was getting toward evening as they was walking down the road when uh, they wanted Jesus to stay with them. You know, and it's getting toward evening. And, and Jesus, and it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sights. And look what verse 32 again. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while we talked while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Their hearts burned. There was a passion. And look, they burned. They, they wanted the, the sup, the communication, uh, you know, the, the, the meal of Christ Himself. As, as they as they were with and had, had good fellowship. Look, as they were being supported and helped. By, by, the, by the one Christ, the meal, the main table. Look, they had a burning desire to be in that fellowship. So, look, I, I hope I've been able to show something here. Uh, please, look, always we need to be careful of who we commune with, who we converse with, and make sure our conversation 
And make sure that we're, the things that we're getting are coming from God and not from the world. And, and look, there's people out there who will try to trick you too. Just because they're good to you or just because they offer you something don't, don't always mean that, that they're your friend. You need to judge things uh, by the Word of God. And you need to judge things uh, uh, with the intimate relationship that Christ has given us in Himself. So... As we go into Christmas, as we go into the next few few uh, weeks, of you know, as we end out this year, uh, le above all, let us let us enjoy the blessings of God. Let us be thankful for the blessings of God. Uh, talking about Romans, you know how we started out. The whole thing about man, the whole the whole reason that the wrath of God was upon man is because look, they did not. They did not look to God as God, and they were not thankful. So let us be thankful and grateful for the table that God has given us and the meal that we're able to share and the blessings in Christ Jesus as we go through the rest of this year and through our life. But let's be dismissed, all right? Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I thank you for... Lord, just humbly speaking to us, God, as we, Lord, as we come to your table, the Word, so many times, Lord, we come in humility knowing, God, we don't deserve. You show us things, God, you reveal yourself to us, Lord, in such a sweet way, God, as a friend and, and Lord, as a Lord. But, God, you, you reveal yourself in such an intimate way that we are able to see things, God, that's not, that's not elsewhere, Lord. It's in that intimate setting as we come to the table of your word and as we commune with you and as we fellowship with you, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, God, and the light that he shines on, on the good things and the, and the taste of, uh, of your goodness in this word, Lord. That's what we're thankful for today, Lord. Thank you, God, for this word. I pray, Lord, in some way, God, that you've been able uh, to speak to others, Lord, in what you've shown us this morning. These things we ask in your name.